Hi guys, my name is Jessica. I am with 514 Photography. My husband and I are wedding photographers in the Atlanta and North Georgia area. Um, I'm also a senior portrait photographer and I am here today to answer the question, what's in my bag? So I'm going to tell you about that. First off, uh, both my husband and I carry low pro backpacks. Um, these are the flip sides. I carry the flip side 400. Rick carries the larger version. He carries a lot more gear than I do. Um, these are actually really awesome. At the end of a wedding day with the uh, low pro backpack and in combination with the spider holster that I wear around my hips, I do not have neck, shoulder, or any kind of tension or pain after a wedding day from wearing my gear around my neck or around one shoulder. So we very much love these backpacks. It's an easy way to get around no matter where you're trekking through for an engagement session. Also, the opening on them is in the back. Um, all of your gear, you can't get to any of your expensive get lenses or gear without opening the back side. So if you're traveling through an airport, all of your goods are safe. So that's very important. Um, I'm actually going to start out with the front pocket. As you can see, something I never leave home without is sticking out. So these are things that I can't make it through a shoot or, and or especially a wedding without. Um, a lint roller. Need I say more? Uh, on a wedding day, if your groom's got lint all over them, or maybe your bridesmaids, or mom, or dad, these things come in handy. Have one in your bag at all times. And you may need it yourself, too. Let's be honest. This is the other thing. We are in Georgia. Right now, it is May. It has been raining nonstop. And so, our last several weddings have not only been humid, but extremely hot. And uh, something that you cannot have enough of in your bag on whether it's an engagement shoot or a wedding or what have you are good old school handkerchiefs. Um, these are just plain white handkerchiefs. I buy them in bulk on Amazon and I have at least five in my bag for every wedding um, and a couple in there for every shoot. Uh, your groom and your bride with her makeup, they will absolutely thank you. I will hand a clean one, not a used one, not a washed one, clean straight out of the package pressed one to our groom when I see him starting to sweat a little. Um, here, this is yours for the day, keep it. Anytime I see sweat beating up, hey, go ahead and dab yourself for just a second and then he'll put it back in his uh, suit pocket and they'll keep that all night and they will forever be grateful to you for it. I also will use a clean one. Um, I keep, I wear a dress on wedding days. So I have one lens pouch on my Spider Holster Pro and it actually just holds my phone, my walkie talkie, and my bride's lipstick if they want to give it to me, um, and a handkerchief. And that other handkerchief I use for a bride, I dab her makeup, I make sure we note the importance of not smearing but dabbing. Um, and there are lots of other incidences you can hand a handkerchief out to. When you do a daddy-daughter first look and dad doesn't have one, he starts crying. Brand new handkerchief every time. Do not go to your next wedding without some of these, especially if you live in a warm state, you guys. Buy them on bulk, get them on Amazon. I get everything on Amazon, let's be honest. Okay, so next, let's see what we got. Uh, these little guys you can get at Home Depot. I'm going to show them to you. These are industrial clips, but they're tiny ones. And very importantly, they have rubber on the tip. When you're hanging up a wedding gown, I use these in one portion of the day. I also can clip these to my belt. Um, when you're hanging a wedding gown, unless your bride is a size three or four or zero, um, sometimes they just look really straight or maybe they're a lot bigger. So when I hang the wedding gown to do the wedding dress, I bunch up the back right at the waistline and I will clip it. This way the photo gives the actual shape to the bridal dress. Don't overclip it. If you have a larger bride and you give them back a photo that looks like it's a dress for a four, they're gonna know and they may be offended. But just to give the dress shape when you're hanging it up. Uh, I have three or four of these and then I just stick them back in my bag when I'm done. I don't make it through a wedding day without those. Also, a very small crochet hook. Uh, oftentimes I will hand this over to the bridesmaids mom or the bridesmaids as they're getting your bride dressed. If you have a bride with an all button up back, unless they read a how to somewhere or somebody suggested them to bring their own, anybody who's got big fingers finds that it takes forever 
to button up the dress. So once you've gotten your picture, your detailed picture of the back of the dress and the hands, getting that dress all bundled up, hand this guy over and they can very quickly and you stay on time and you keep in mind the timeline this way. When you hand this uh, little crochet hook over so they can pull those little cords over each individual button. So keep a crochet hook, just a little guy. You don't need much. Uh, you can get these any store that sells crafts, including Walmart or Amazon. Scissors. These are actually styling scissors we may or may not use in detail shots. Um, and we have a separate bag with styling details, but I have found it's more convenient to keep them in my bag since they are real scissors. They actually come in handy a lot. Anytime you're trying to, um, if your groom, for instance, we just did this this weekend. If your groom's wearing a brand new suit that they bought for their wedding, but the coattails are still, still sewn together, uh, snip them right off. Anywho, there's so many uses for scissors. Lots and lots of business cards, you guys. So these are mine. I get our business cards printed on Moo. They're very luxurious. They're very nice. Um, but I keep a lot of them in there because here's the deal. If you guys are serving the heck out of your clients on their wedding day and you are working hard and you're smiling through no matter what, not only will your bride and groom notice, but their family and their friends will notice too. Um, we know we've had a really good wedding day if at the end of the night we've handed out several business cards, not just to other vendors, but to the family and the friends. If they all go, can I have your business card? I know someone getting married. That's when we know we've had a great wedding day. It happens to us much often. Um, very often, excuse me. So we make sure we keep our business cards in there and also to share with other vendors that you've connected well with on that day. Let's see. The storm jacket. If you shoot outdoor weddings, you have to have one of these. It comes in a great little pouch. If it starts raining, this thing will cover your camera, keep it from getting wet, keep it from dying on you in the middle of a very important day. So the storm jacket, that's exactly what it's called. Get yourselves one. There's other versions too on Amazon. You don't have to spend a ton of money on it. It just needs to cover your gear. Command hooks. We keep pretty command hooks. I keep several of them because here's what happens. We use command hooks to hang the dress um, anytime there's not really a good place to hang it. So we may just stick a command hook right on the wall, hang the dress. Uh, this one's a chrome looking one. But what I have found is we get so tied up during the day, I will hang a command hook up, we'll hang the dress, we'll take the picture. Then my next priority is perfectly getting the dress back to its original spot, back to the getting ready room, zipping it back up in its bag, and I forget these things everywhere. So we have more than one. Because if we have a wedding on Friday, and I leave the command hook, and then we go to Saturday and we need it, oh, shoot, it's still in the door yesterday's venue. Um, and because we leave them behind, they leave no damage. So when somebody discovers it's been left in their venue, they can easily remove it. But these are great, you guys. Deodorant, need I say more? Um, oh, this is really cool. We don't use it that much, um, except just to do some really cool style detail shots maybe at night. I got this guy on Amazon, really cheap. It's battery operated. Turn it on, and then it's just a bunch of itty bitty tiny twinkly lights. So you can set this up somewhere and then shoot through it. It looks really cool during reception, maybe if your couple's doing their dance or something. Uh, I don't even think I paid five bucks for it, so it's cool to have in there. Oh, I always have uh, sensor cleaning swabs. You can buy these also online. Um, anytime you need to clean your sensor in a GIF, if there's something on it, you always want a clean device. So I keep those in there. Uh, and a sphere crystal. These things are really cool for creative shots. If you have enough extra time during your day or you're you have plenty of time during portraits if you pull this out and you kind of hold it in front of your lens. It does a lot of cool things. Um, again, it's something artistic we don't use every day. It's just in there. Okay, that's really it for my pocket, my front pocket. Now we're going to get to the good stuff. We're going to get to the gear. Rick and I both shoot all Canon. Uh, I carry, we both carry for our main cameras, Canon 5D Mark III's. That's this guy right here. We also have a backup camera and it is a 6D. So if you're just starting out your business and you need a good full frame camera, the um, Mark III may be a little bit expensive for you. I would definitely check out the 6D. 
Um, it was one of our starting cameras and, and it was a workhorse and it's now our backup camera. We absolutely love it. And attached to it, uh, my bag is still set up from the last wedding. I didn't set this up for you. Is one of my favorite lenses. It's the 24 to 70. A lot of people will um, tell you when you're starting out or just in general, you have to have prime lenses. They are amazing. They are absolutely gorgeous. They're also very expensive. I will tell you, and if you read on my blog post, if you get onto our website and check out our blog um, about this lens, is if you're just starting out, you need something that is super versatile. If you have a budget to spend on a good L-series lens, you need something that's versatile. Because if you're just starting out, you're likely not just shooting engagements, but you're shooting families, large families. You're running around chasing kids. You may be shooting maternity, all sorts of things. Maybe you're volunteering at church and you're shooting services. You need something that's versatile, something that's got a wide angle, something you can zoom in. And that's where this 24 to 70 f2.8, this is the second series, comes into hand because you can do anything with this. And if you've read my blog, you know I have shot an entire wedding with just this lens. My first wedding, I shot with just this lens. A um, Wedding we had recently several weeks back where we got stuck in a very small area. It was the only thing covered and it was pouring. Um, I used just this lens for all of their portraits. Uh, I absolutely love it. It's also very fast to focus so it works great during the receptions too. It focuses well in, in the dark. Um, and I just love this lens. So I can't say enough good things about the 24 to 70 2.8. My other favorite lens is, and yes, I do not keep caps on my, my lenses when they're in my bag. Uh, this is the 70 to 200 2.8, also the second series. I can also shoot just a wedding with just this lens. Actually, most all of the portraits you see on our website right under the um, weddings and engagements section, if you're looking at our galleries, Almost all of my favorite portraits were taken with just this lens. The 70 to 200, I don't care how heavy it is, you will see me with this lens on my camera most of the day. I love the compression, I love the bokeh, I love its sharpness. Um, during a wedding reception, uh, excuse me, during the ceremony, one, it's imperative because you don't want to be up in their faces taking shots when they are exchanging rings or exchanging vows. So this allows you to be far away and take beautiful shots. Uh, the 50. This is the 50 millimeter 1.2. As you can see, I never shoot at 1.2. I learned very early on that that is a slippery slope. Um, I shoot anywhere from 2.5 and up. I don't like super. I like my car. I like my clients' eyes to be sharp. I like their faces to be sharp. It is not really our style to have um, a lot of blur in our images, except for the bokeh, except for the background. So. Uh, I use this lens mostly during the getting ready hours. I will put it below 2.0 for things like zipping up the dress. Um, oh, I shoot the shoes. I almost always shoot the shoes with the 51.2. Um, and I will do receptions with this lens too a lot just because it is so crisp and clear. But this thing is really slow to focus in the dark. So if you're having some really fun dance moments during the reception and you're trying to catch it, this guy will still be focusing. Even if you're using your infrared focus on your flash to help you focus, focus this may cause you to miss some shots in, at the reception. I also use a lot on my senior shots, uh, my senior shoots. This lens gets used a lot. And this baby. Who doesn't love? This is the Canon 85. It's the uh, 1.2. Lots of glass. This lens I treated myself to. We had rented it several times, but last year we treated ourselves to it. It's now in my bag. There's not much to not love about this lens. It creates fabulous, spectacular portraits. It is crisp. It is sharp. It is beautiful. But I will tell you, during a wedding, um, if we've gotten behind on the timeline or whatever's going on where we've only got 10, 15 minutes with the bride, I do not fool around. With changing my lenses because I can keep this lens on my camera and uh, shoot as many portraits in one spot as I can. We can go full length, three quarter, and zoomed in without me ever moving. I can get three shots out of every pose, every direction, then I can move. So I can get three shots 
for every one move more than I can with this. If we're short for time, I will never take this lens during portraits off of my camera. We have this, I use it a lot during slower things like engagement sessions and senior sessions. Um, I'll shoot my own family with this photo. We'll take it on vacation and stuff like that with this lens, excuse me. So that's the 85. That's it for lenses. I have four lenses. I have the 70 to 200, I have the 24 to 70, I have the 50 millimeter and I have the 85. My most used lenses are the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200. Then I have my on-camera flash. So we used to use the Young Nuo 600 EXs. We upgraded recently. Um, these are much more reliable. They also have the lithium ion batteries. One battery lasts all day and the recycle time on these guys are insane. This is the uh, Flashpoint. I don't know if you can see that. These are by Adorama. And these came highly suggested from our friends at Pixelist Photography. They had been using them for a while, so we went ahead and invested in these. They are amazing. It is the um, Flashpoint, I believe it's called the R2. Anyway, these are fabulous, and if you already know how to use Canon flashes, or if you knew how to use this Young Nova 600 EX, it has the very same function, so you don't have to learn how to use something again. And this is my other invaluable piece of equipment. This is the Dem Flip It. This is the best bounce card ever. It's extremely durable. It's some really thick plastic. It has a band that goes on here. It's Velcro and rubber, so it's pretty secure. And it goes in all sorts of directions. And you can spin it around from the side of your lens to the front. Um, Dem, D-E-M-B, Flip It. It was like 50 bucks maybe. And I just leave it on my lens all the time. We are technically mostly natural light photographers, but I will tell you, during all the getting ready hours, I now bounce flash. I keep the flash on my camera and I bounce usually on a 45-45. And what that is, is on camera, pointed 45 direction towards the wall behind me. So kind of like that and then like that. Um, I'll probably make another video about that anyway. So the Dem Flip It and the um, Flashpoint R2s. I also always have a flash on my camera during the receptions. That's a must. Um, and sometimes church ceremony, although most of the time churches do not allow you to use flash, so we don't even bother. That's why we have the Mark III's. We can push up our ISO and still create beautiful images. Uh, that's it. Oh, no, no. We gotta get down here. In this bottom pocket, I have extra batteries for the Canon, for the Mark III. There's several of those. And then, of course, extra cards. So the great thing about the Mark III is that it records to two cards at once. I have um, the old school, your CF card, and I get, I shoot on 64 gigs, and then my SD card. I use the Extreme Pro, Pro cards. I love these. Um, up to a nine hour day, I just leave one 64 card in my camera and I very rarely will fill it up. Um, I come home right away, I upload my SD card. I won't take the CF card out. I'll upload my SD card to the computer and immediately back it up to the cloud. As soon as we get home for weddings, it's very important and the reason I do that is, God forbid, we hope it doesn't, but what if our house burned down in the middle of the night? Or what if somebody broke in and stole our computer? I'm just saying, it happens, things happen. So we don't wait till the next morning. As soon as we come home, we upload the photos and they get backed up directly to the cloud before we ever go to bed. Um, and then we work on our catalogs from Lightroom and stuff after that. But that's another video. Well, that's it. Again, my name's Jessica. Our website is 514photo.com. We are wedding photographers in the North Georgia and Atlanta area. And you have seen what I have to have on a wedding day and what's in my bag. So thank you for watching.